said, get on there and just get some paper over here. So, I, you know, paper has really exploded in price. It's very expensive now. Food, I ended up food and price hike. So I ended up going to Walmart. They said they could get it to us that afternoon. I order five cases of 10 reams of paper. You know how heavy a box of 10 reams of paper is, right? Yes. Yes. So why is Walmart having DoorDash bring your fucking paper? <laughs> Poor mother. DoorDash <laughs> delivers everything now. <laughs> well, DoorDash, I think she thought she was bringing a quesarito. I'm not sure what she thought she was bringing. Not five cases, not five cases of paper to a second floor business. No, they bring you paper. How many five cases of paper? So that's what, uh, fifty reams. Yes. Fifty reams of paper. Uh, did you tip her? Fifteen dollars. Good. Chintzy. Oh, shut, <laughs> shut up! Fifteen dollars. Did you have, have a dollar elevator involved? No, this dumbass. She put the boxes of paper in a wheelchair for downstairs in the lobby <laughs> and brought it up in the damn wheelchair. You should have gone on the Dunder Mifflin Infinity website and ordered it. <laughs> if that's what she said. I would have done that. But then she so then she comes upstairs and she's dumping out the paper right at the at the front of the door where it blocks it up where the patients can't even get it inside. Then not her job to, to put it in the right place. It's her job to get it there. Oh, no. She came up to the counter and was having a fit. She was just having a fit about it, acting a fool. And then <laughs> this is the little guy who, who does our check, and he goes, um, can you come up here and talk to this lady? She was being very extra, like very, very extra, and I can't deal with it. And I was like, no problem. And I got there, and she was just acting crazy, and it's like, and he said too i'm pretty sure it tells you what you're picking up so if you know that you don't want to be carrying five cases of paper don't take the job anyway so well, she it. started out delivering you know fast food and now she's fucking schlepping paper well get a cart bitch get a cart what I mean, I'm saying is she wasn't anticipating having to get reams of paper from Walmart. <laughs> she took the job, okay? She took that's the job, true. so that's my whole thing. And if you're going to do this job, get a cart. I mean, it's like there's the carts are like 20 bucks at Academy. She could have got one of those. I don't know. But anyway, it was very irritating. So I went on, and I don't normally do this because I hate it when people do it to us. But I was a, I went on their site and I railed and railed. You railed and railed. Shook my fist at that screen. You oh, I was curious. A, you reamed them a new one. I did. I, I reamed them over our reams. You know, the Pakistani coder that's going to get that message really cares. <laughs> oh, just like I do when I, because I'm the one who monitors our stuff. Yeah. When I now imagine you live in another country. That you... <laughs> like, well, too bad for you. Go somewhere else. Tough shit. <laughs> All right. Well, while well, while Steph is contemplating her next method of um, abusing a poor private contractor for DoorDash, <laughs> maybe she's going to get cinder blocks delivered tomorrow. <laughs> Only fifty of them, though. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna get um, just some like cages of rats, something like <laughs> cages that. of rats. I mean, run by the uh, rat emporium. I need a cage of rats. <laughs> Can can you bring me cigarettes? No, it's no, we don't allow that. You can get alcohol, food, uh, reams of paper, but you know, hey, God forbid they bring you a pack of cigarettes. Yeah, Not that's kind of messed up. I mean, but I, to me, this kind of goes along the same lines as uh, with the uh, Lyft and Uber, where they said we're not an ambulance. I yeah. feel like DoorDash. They should also be like, we're not UPS. It's right. not the same. You can get a pack of cigarettes delivered on GoPuff. <laughs> go puff yeah it's an app like how, how much is that it's gonna be like 15 bucks Jesus. one pack of smokes so it's you can just pretend you live in new york or yep. canada or well, canada they're 25 bucks or something holy Lord. yeah but in canada, canada, canada anyway in canada the doordash will bring you weed yeah oh, so yeah and, and you can smoke it, weed in comedy club for every uh, 10 bags of weed you order for the 10th one, you get a replica dildo of Justin Trudeau's penis. <laughs> Only the punch <laughs> card. Yeah. I'd I mean, rather have a replica of his real father's penis. Castro? Yeah. 
<laughs> he does kind of look like young Castro, but hey, we're not going to besmirch the, the leader of Canada today, even though I just did. This is season seven, episode 17 of Radio Labyrinth. We talk about pop culture and things like that from a Gen X perspective or whatever the hell Dustin is. <laughs> I'm, I'm Gen X, damn it. I'm 75. You're a millennial. You're a millennial. What are you? Are you Gen X or are you millennial? No, I'm Gen X. Yeah, I was 75. Okay, yeah, you definitely are. Yeah. You did miss out on Hong Kong Fui, and for that, I feel bad for you. Yeah. Well, they were in reruns. I, I double it up. I double Scatman Carruthers up on Sh The Shining, so I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I saw The Shining when I was 10 years old. What a great uh, uh, example of parenting. Yeah, you can watch it. <laughs> that old lady, I'm like, oh, something's tingling down there. Oh, now I'm scared. <laughs> Hurry, hurry, kill, <laughs> and then they whole... killed the black guy. That was the, that was the <laughs> shitty part. The only person that dies in that entire movie, and it's the black yeah. guy. Yeah, and then he it, doesn't die in the book. Yeah, he doesn't die mm -hmm. in the book. No, exactly. He, he comes back as well. I guess he's in the spirit realm, in uh, in uh, the the with Doctor Sleep. Yeah, he's a good book. Tony's place. Yeah, I like Doctor Sleep, but there's a lot of twelve step shit in it that's kind of annoying, which is in a lot of his books. Certainly Wolves of the Kala, where they're talking about, uh, is it Wolves of the Kala, where you hear an awful lot about uh, Per Callahan? Yeah. Yeah, yeah he goes, he, he uses the steps in, in, a, in a lot of the book. I mean, most of the books. He's either a writer that's a recovering alcoholic, a recovering alcoholic, or a recovering alcoholic writer. So. Or he's obsessing on a, comp or he's, you know, binged out on booze and coke, writing, uh, uh, which, which. Uh, oh, the Tommy Knockers. <laughs> No, no, that no. That was a coked so, out. Definitely. But no, I'm thinking of one of the uh, the Tower books. And it's not drawing of the three. The Wastelands. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. The Wastelands. And in that, I'm talking about um, where he's, he's, for some reason, he thinks that uh, ZZ Top's Velcro Fly was a song worth uh, putting down to paper as a memorable tune. <laughs> I know. Terrible song. <laughs> Yeah, Even it was. It, it was, must it. have been. It was. And what's weird was, I think it was closer to when he wrote that, like a more current album. It wasn't even like a classic ZZ Top song. He could use sharp dressed man or anything like that. But now Velcro. I saw it on MTV when I went down to piss. And this <laughs> <Yeah>. is <important. laughs> throw it, throw it on there. Because MTV made a big deal about that song. I've never heard it on the radio since the 80s. Not at the all. The only time I ever heard it played was there was a bar that we used to go to in Detroit in the 90s called Graffiti's. Mm -hmm. And they remember whenever the big craze was you jump on a trampoline with that freaking Velcro suit and get stuck to the wall. They were yeah. doing that in all the bars, but they would always play the Velcro fly. They would just play it over and over while drunks would run up there in that suit and jump on the trampoline <laughs> and try and stick to the wall. You know, they'd be the poor schmuck that has to peel the drunk guy off the wall. <laughs> no wonder all the people in Lud were going crazy. They had to hear that fucking song over and over again. Exactly. But you know, guys, this is what I was saying, though. I finished Pet Cemetery today on Audible, and Dexter does the narration of it, and he's so good. And I didn't think about, you know, I've seen the movie a bunch of times, never read the book. That was part of why I wanted to do the thing, which I, know, I heard that, that this is the closest one to the book pet cemetery right yeah but towards the end whenever gage rolls up on the set and he's coming after judd you know in the movie he didn't say all this but dexter does gage's baby voice oh. on audible and he's like judd your wife's down here with us she was a whore <laughs> she fucked all your friends and it, I'm, I'm sitting i was doing my work and i was like oh god damn this is creepy <laughs> Now, wait a minute. He narrates a movie, or how is it? Yeah, that audio book. Okay. Michael, Michael yeah. Steele. Right. Yeah. I know that, but how? What? How does it not? How is the movie different? Gage doesn't say all those awful things. No, no. Gage doesn't say you're. She liked it up the ass most of all, Judd. Uh, no, he did not say that in the movie. Well, that's the same. I mean, he did. They did the same thing with uh, the Green Mile. I mean, because at the end, you know, where he goes to the warden's wife in the bed where she's dying of cancer. Well, when they show up at the house and she sees all these men there, she she's the the cancer has made her, you know, just start just rattling off stuff, and she's like. Bring me that big black cock over here. Didn't say that in the movie. <laughs> hey, Tom Hanks, get that big old cock over here. Yeah, geez. And of course, they were talking about the chicken outback, and we'll just leave it at that. <laughs>
All right. So moving on from Stephen King, we have a guest this week. His name is David Willis. He's been on the show before. He is with Adult Swim and also one of the creators of Aqua Teen Hunger Force, Squid Billy, and Your Pretty Face is Going to Hell. We're going to talk about the Aqua Teen Hunger Force shorts that debuted on YouTube this week, and we'll ask him a bunch of questions. Um, and then, uh, listen, spoilers abound when we get to talking about certain things. But first and foremost, my first radio show is uh, under my belt and underneath the rug. I didn't want to think about it anymore. I was nervous as hell, but Greg Russ from the Von Hester von hessler doctor and joined me and we had a good conversation about batman the show is called the Popcast, and it airs on wsb live uh saturdays at 6 p.m and you can also get the podcast later that is a work in progress right now um if you're listening to this show in the morning the day it comes out uh, my guest this week will be uh jamie bendel from the punchline comedy club talking about all the shows coming up in may and uh, among other things, and uh, I'll be reminiscing on 20 years ago when the big movies in 2002 were Spider-Man and, of course, The Greenskeeper, directed by Kevin Green, who we had on the show a while ago. But, um, yeah, we're going to look back on, uh, on that historic 20-year classic, The Greenskeeper, with John Rocker and Southside Steve Rickman. Um, let's see. Now I'm looking at these notes here. Uh, it says I need to eat a tweet. Why do I have to? Oh, because I said that if, if they let Elon Musk buy Twitter, that I would eat the tweet. That is exactly what you said. I didn't believe that they would allow him to do it. We're going to allow you to put a little peanut butter on it. So we decided. Okay. So print it out. Get All some right, peanut butter. It, let me get it off my crock. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was uh, crazy how um every when the story broke that he was finally buying it for for you know for sure it floated from 43 to 45 44 they just kept throwing out all these numbers and I was like you know in most instances you know a million dollars more or a thousand dollars more is something but a billion dollars more is ridiculous to to yeah. float one way or the other that's a lot of money I mean, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. That's right, smart of money. Damn. That is. That's uh, a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Jesus God, I can't believe it. Um, I do you it think he'll free. change the name? Do you think he'll change the name to Tesla? No, I don't think he'll change. My MySpace X. <laughs> MySpace X. I like that. I saw that, that on was Twitter. Pretty good. Yeah. People are losing their minds though. That that somehow that because he bought it that it's just going to be like nothing but right-wing trolls or alt-right trolls and stuff like that. And that's not going to be the case. He doesn't like them either. He he wants to be middle of the road, say what you want, not worry about getting canceled because you're trying to make a joke that may or may not have offended one person. Um, he's trying to make it like it used to be, yeah. which to me makes it seem like he's more libertarian than you know partisan at all. And libertarian, I guess, these days just means you're... I don't know, middle of the road, but listen, so many people that I used to follow and that followed me disappeared and now they're starting to show up in my timeline again. So whatever, I don't really care all that much, but uh, it is cool to see people seethe that drive me nuts. I will say that and not, not for political reasons at all. I don't, I don't care. I just think it's funny that people make such a big deal about a social media uh, app that you don't even really need to use. I mean, but you, you can't not, you can't make it like it used to be because you can't make people like they used to be. That's just how they are now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my god, that whole generation. Yeah. You know, I, I saw on Twitter today. Speaking of which, that we have a new department of misinformation. Uh, the Department of Homeland Security created this thing, and it's called the Department of Misinformation. Blah blah blah. Whatever. It's like a Ministry of Truth. And I don't know what it's going to amount to. Probably nothing because you can't really do shit like that in our country. But what the funny thing is the woman that runs it used to be in a band called the Moaning Myrtles. And uh, where the, you know, it was in the mid 2000s, there were these bands popping up, proliferating on MySpace that sang songs about Harry Potter. So uh, this woman and uh, her friend <laughs> made a band and they were the Moaning Myrtles. And I think that's funny because now she works for 
Professor Mum- Mumbledore. The Ministry of Magic. Yes. I just think that's so weird. You know, I, I probably liked them and played them because back in, okay, I'm going to admit something terrible here. Back in the MySpace days when I was a single man, this is 99X era, uh, when I worked there for one year, you could go to my, uh, to you could go to MySpace and type in female, single, lives close by, likes Harry Potter. Boom. I got a couple dates that way. It was creepy. I don't do that anymore, of course, because I'm married. Uh, but uh, I found that to be an interesting way to meet new people. How many of them were 12? None of them. <laughs> None of them. I set the age parameters to 25. Oh, well, that's good at least. Yeah, I don't know if you had age parameters, but of course I'm not creepy like that, and I would never do that. Um, but uh, yeah, I actually met one lady, and uh, lady, I met a woman, and I uh, ended up having her on as a character on 99X uh, to do Harry Potter trivia. I was really into Harry Potter. Jeff waited in line to get the last book, and he bought me a copy. Do you remember that? Yeah. And uh, then he photoshopped me on the cover, and I think it had something to do with sharding. <laughs> But anyway, so this is where we are now. We're old, and the people who grew up with as children loving Harry Potter and you know doing all that kind of Harry Potter crap, like creating a band called the Moaning Myrtles and dressing up like Moaning Myrtle, uh, they're now running everything. Isn't that great? Isn't that comforting? Yeah, we're not running shit. No, Gen X is not running shit. You have the millennials and the Z, Gen Z that are going to run everything. Well, you know, like they hook up, uh, you know, President Boomer. And, uh, you know, feed him, you know, baby blood all night long so he can get up in the morning. <laughs> you know, that's not true, though. If if he were to step down for some reason, Kamala Harris would be um, probably the only but the first Gen X president. So I'll root for her in that instance just because she's Gen X. you got to stick with your own. Yeah, sure. That would be pretty cool to have a Gen X president at least for a couple years before the next boomer ca- crawls out of his coffin. I'm going to be president. <laughs> well, as a woman, I think it would also be nice that she's a woman. Yeah, besides as a the woman. fact that she's going to be quoting movie quotes and you know throwing those out there, <clears throat> she'll be a woman too. Which she'll be hot. Yeah. Uh, it's like seven o'clock, man. I got to get it high. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! There's a new uh, Nirvana tribute. There's a the new Nirvana, Nirvana compilation coming out. I gotta go get that. I just it would be great. Gen X, lazy ass Gen X. She can't go meet with Putin because she's binge watching The Sopranos for the ten thousandth time. <laughs> Maybe a Who's the Boss marathon. Because <laughs> that would be me. I wouldn't make a good president. No, I would like the house and the chef and you know the unlimited power, but I wouldn't want to do anything. So, I mean, I don't know if she would make a bad president. I mean, how could she do any worse than anybody else? I mean, they all, they've all, they all, they're all terrible. She can't be any worse than the previous two, or the current and previous. Yeah, I mean, old she's just, I know at, I'm an old At fart. least she's not going to be shaking hands with the air. That's right. <laughs> I know, I think she gets a little too much, a um, little too much hate. You know what I mean? I think she's probably like a real cool person. She's just in a role where she has to pretend to be whatever she is. I don't know how is. cool she is. She has put a lot of people in jail. So I don't know how cool she is. Like you want to hang out with her. Cause... I don't know. I bet you she'd, she'd smoke a blunt with you and drink a beer too. And you <laughs> talk about what it was like listening to Eddie Grant when you were seven or 10 or 12. I don't know. I just think she gets a lot of that, a lot of unnecessary grief, and that's because she's a woman and she faces the misogyny. Anyway. Well, maybe if they, maybe if she gets it, they'll do um, a cover, and it'll be "We're Gonna Rock Down to Pennsylvania Avenue." Oi! Voting for Kamala. <laughs> Kamala, please. <laughs> Kamala is that wrestler who used to go. <laughs> <laughs> Heard the latest news on the radio. and now for the latest news. What's in the news? Um, now, Steph, last week and the week before that, I believe you had recommended "They Call Me Magic," which is a new documentary about Magic Johnson. On that was not me. I thought you said you were going to watch it, and you recommended it. I did not recommend it. I want to watch it, but oh. that was one of Jeff's views or snooze. I think. Yes. Well, I've used it. Did anyone else? Not yet. No, not yet. 
All right. Well, that's why I texted something to Steph last night that uh, you will find out, and then we can talk about that part of it. But it's a good documentary. I always loved Magic Johnson. He just always smiling. He made me like basketball when I didn't really like basketball, although I kind of knew who Dr. J was because he was in comic books and always on TV. But you didn't really care about pro basketball until the 80s, you know what I mean? And it's a good compliment. It's a good thing to watch after having watched um, Winning Time. And I'm all caught up on Winning Time. But as I have said before and other people are saying, it's pretty much fictional bullshit. And uh, the battle between HBO Max and Jerry West keeps heating up. They keep going back and forth, and they give him the snarky. Jerry West, of course, the you know the the model for the NBA logo, former coach, former player uh, for the for the Lakers, and uh, a primary cast member on this show. Who, by the way, that guy looks just like him, doesn't he? Oh yeah, yeah. And is, are you guys caught up on that show? I am. I'm one behind, but go ahead. Yeah, the thing that's aside from John C. Riley's shirt being open all the time, and I thought that that was just a creative liberties, but I've been looking at, at pictures of the of the real guy, and uh, yeah, his shirt was always open. That grosses me out. Come on, I don't like it when guys leave the shirts open. It just makes me sick to my stomach. There's no reason for that. No one wants to see that. No one wants to see your dick. No one wants to see your chest hair, your belly hair. Leave the leave the open. To, to the women. Am I wrong? Am I being... Um, well, as long as there's not a gold chain stuck in it, that's fine. But that always freaked me out when you'd see somebody like button their shirt up and wear a gold chain outside and you would see like five or six chest hairs that were yeah. <laughs> that were pulled out of the gold Open chain. through the chain. Yeah. <clears throat> no thanks. That, that actor's Jason Clark, Australian actor. Uh, he was on that show from Showtime uh, that I liked called Brotherhood. He's been in a ton of shit, but he's mm -hmm. a good... I don't know if I so much mind the seventies yeah. disco chest. I don't really mind it that bad. No. I, I, now, if it was today, like if I saw somebody walking around a day like that, I would probably wonder what the hell is going on with them. But <laughs> if of the time period, I kind of like it because it just reminds me of of good times. Right. Disco chest. Oh, you mean the show? Good times. No, I mean of good of good times in my life in my oh, memory. Okay. The disco chest brings it all back. Disco chest does not advertise. <laughs> <laughs> I never had disco chest. I just have you know, name alternative alt rock chest. We're the deep V. Yeah, I remember that makes me think of that Ben Stiller thing from Saturday Night Live where. He keeps having the plunging neckline, and he comes out of the bathroom with his dick out of his shirt. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah. He gets arrested. <laughs> oh, my brain's all over the place, guys. So, you know, if you need to smack me around to help me land. Um, but Jerry West said he's going to take it all the way to the Supreme Court. And they do make him look kind of racist on there and stuff. Yeah, they make everybody look terrible. And, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar came out and said, I never told the little kid from airplane to fuck off <laughs> and and he goes i didn't sit around treating everybody like shit um but but pivoting to the to uh, they call me magic it's real fascinating i like looking at these documentaries from the time when i was a kid and and all the hype and everything it was it's it's fun to go back and look at that from you know different eyes and and uh, to see that there was a lot of racism especially in the uh when you're talking about the Celtics and Larry Bird and how everyone called him the great white hope. And I remember people talking about him that way and I didn't really know what it meant. I'm just like, Oh, he's a white guy and they hope he does well. But you know, it's, it's really bizarre to, to think that we just really, I guess what has changed. I don't know. I guess a lot has changed. Obviously that's a stupid thing to say, but back in that time, 1980 through 1983, it was still fucked up. Well, you know, I had a, my coworker who is black friend, you know, she says to me yesterday, she was, she's been watching the Jeffersons and she said, I don't understand how this show has made it through cancel culture. I mean, the things that George says, I mean, he like says the H word and I'm like the H word, she goes, you know, and I'm like honky. She said, yeah. And I said, the H word. I said, you understand that does not hurt us. You can call oh. us honky till the cows come home you can call us pretty much any racial name 
and it doesn't hurt us, you know, not like it does you, you know what I mean? It's not the right. same. Like, yeah, most of the time goes, we'll agree with you. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. she's like, if you, so if somebody called you white trash, I said, yeah, only if they were white. If another white person called me white trash, I'd be like, fuck you, you're white trash. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I'm like, if somebody black or Mexican or any other race called me white trash, I'd be like, okay. Yeah. It's a term of endearment. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I never understood why Honky was supposed to make people upset. I guess it only made Tom Willis upset. <laughs> no, and she even said, like, well, sometimes when I hear you guys talking and I'll hear you say something about a redneck or whatever, I'm like, oh, ooh. Because, like, the way I was raised, that was you know, terrible. You don't call white people that or call them crackers. or And I'm like, not you can call us all of those things. We don't care. How old is she? She's 42. All right, so now picture yourself in the late 80s in Georgia uh, calling a white person a redneck. <laughs> not, not a good idea. Not a good idea. <laughs> See, we grew up in, in the North. We all did pretty much except for Dustin, right? We all grew up in the North where that kind of shit didn't really exist. It may have in an urban area or in a town with you know more than 5,000 people, but we didn't encounter stuff like that. This is the South, so there's generations and generations and generations. It's like you better be careful. They, you know, redneck might get nuts. So I understand that. But yeah. yeah, call me a honky. I don't care. Yeah, call me a honky. I'm. That's you, you know, we both we both agreed though. There is a big difference between uh, the uh and the r. Neither for us to say. We can't say either of those words. But you can't even does, talk about it. It's much harsher. The er is much harsher. Yes. I said, but, but you could call us, gotcha. you could call us crack up and we're good with it. <laughs> <laughs> the only time I felt insulted was when uh, I, I was being a honky and beeped my horn after a concert. And the lady turned around and went, she said, uh, she said, hold your horses, McCain voter. <laughs> and I'm not going to use use the accent, but I was very offended because I had planned on voting for Obama and did so. But just because I was white, you think I'm voting for McCain? That hurt my feelings. <laughs> that is a honky thing to do, though, what you did. Well, I waited. I'm not normally a beep. I don't normally beep at all, but I mean, I was sitting there for 15 minutes after a concert. And she was just blabbering away to the car. So, meet me. We are retroactively trying to cancel things in the past. Steve Martin was the latest version of it, although I don't think it stuck. I have no idea where it came from, but it seems to me to be gone. Someone is upset about uh, his skit and, of course, the song for King Tut, which, what, 1978? He came on Saturday Night Live and performed his hit novelty song, King Tut, which radio stations did play. Now, why do you think Steve Martin wrote a song about King Tut in 1978? Anybody know? It was King Tut. The thing was in the museums. Mm -hmm. was the, around. That year. the real King Tut. Right. The so he wrote a song, and he dressed up like ancient Egyptians, not current Egyptians. He dressed up like ancient Egyptians, and they did the dance and had fun, and, and uh, you know, da -da 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 -da. and people were getting pissed. But then other people came out and started to defend him because it's ridiculous. Why would you care? who would even see it you know it's not on the radio uh nobody's playing it on television and just why what's the point of of getting upset about something that no one sees well somebody found it on youtube so it was i guarantee you that's where it yeah. started they do that all the time you'll you'll find things that pop up and all of a sudden they'll be like 11 years old on youtube but it'll be something like that something from you know our era and you'll have all these millennials just like why they don't understand any of the context and and that's the whole problem you know they don't get how it's funny by everything right. that it was related to at the time and since that goes over their heads the sarcasm just doesn't make sense well, and one of the lines in the song is he's my favorite honky <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> anyway so i thought uh it would be interesting if we all found a, a thing or two that you know, if you look back on it, probably wouldn't hold up today. And I'm even taking it out of the 70s and bringing it closer to the modern era. Uh, you guys have one? I just did the Dana Carvey Chicken Man from Saturday Night Live. You won't find that on YouTube. 
You won't. Why not? Because he, he he's had that scrubbed. You can't find it anywhere. Is that the one where he's playing an Asian? Yeah. Chicken no make good good house pet. Okay. Oh yeah, I remember <laughs> that now. Okay. Uh, what made them think they could do that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> What about um, Dieter from Sprockets? That's got to be offensive to German people. Yeah, nobody cares. <laughs> That's, nobody cares in Germany if you're making fun of them. Uh, I put uh, down uh, Jack Tripper. The character would never fly now from Three's Company. A man pretending to be gay. Pre pretending to be gay. In order to, to room with two women. Yeah. And then all the jokes that Mr. Roper and Mr. Furley used to make. Yeah, yeah, you know, all, all yeah, yeah, all those, yeah, you know, the backhanded gay jokes that were just you know thrown out every episode. I mean, if Furley was, was in the Roper? episode, it was there. Yeah, but Mr. Roper always would go, you know, yeah. put his hand in, <laughs> and I thought that you know because of that show, I thought that's what you, that's how you greeted gay people. Ooh, hello. <laughs> yeah. It's not. No, you have to learn your lesson. Um, <laughs> I, Okay, mine's from 1994. It's a song by Tim McGraw called I'm an Indian Outlaw. And this is, I think it was his first big hit. Tim McGraw, of course, the famous country singer and also now an actor. Uh, here are some of the lyrics. I'm an Indian outlaw, half Cherokee and Choctaw. My baby, she's a Chippewa. She's one of a kind. All my friends call me Bear Claw. <laughs> the village chieftain is my pawpaw. He gets his orders from my mama. She makes him walk the line. You can find me in my wigwam. I'll be beaten on my tom tom. <laughs> Pull out the pipe and smoke you some. Hey, and pass it around. That's a fucked up song. <laughs> That's like close to Ahab the Arab. The sheik oh, yeah. of sand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With rings on her fingers and bells on her toes and a bone in her nose. Ho, ho. I wonder if he still plays that in concert. Indian Outlaw? Probably. Huh. It was a huge song. I don't know why he wouldn't. Oh, I thought you were talking about Ray Stevens. <laughs> no, I don't know. Is he still alive? I don't know. I don't know. Now, yeah, if you're offended by Tim McGraw, let me tell you about Ahab the Arab. <laughs> Yeah, the emeralds and rubies just a dripping off of him and a ring on every finger of his hand. He wore a big old turban wrapped around his head and a scimitar by his side. And every evening about midnight, he'd jump on his camel named Clyde and ride. <laughs> Silently through the night to the Sultan's tent where he would meet up with Fatima of the Seven Veils. Ridiculous. Uh, That's what the camel Clyde says to Ahab. Uh, <laughs> What about turning Japanese? By the vapors? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think I'm turning Japanese. I really think so. <laughs> they didn't do the a Asian voice in that, though, <laughs> like no. Dana Carvey. No. I just tried to Google that Dana Carvey, but you can't find it anywhere. No, it's gone. Yeah. Oh. Hey, check out Atlanta Pizza in Euro. We love Atlanta Pizza in Euro. They're the longest sponsor of our podcast, but that's not the only reason we love them. We love them for the food. Uh, and I want to thank Mike Hall and everyone who works there, even Dustin's kid, uh, <laughs> who does a very good job of keeping the bathrooms clean. <laughs> Go out there, check them out, see the new full color menu with pictures of food now available inside the restaurant. And they're gearing up for a busy spring. It's the return of Team Trivia. We're going to be there the week. Uh, it's Tuesday night. I don't know the exact date, but we'll be there playing Team Trivia the week of uh, before Memorial Day. So whatever day that is, the Tuesday before Memorial May, Day. May 24th is the... May 24th. It'll be two days before Gil's first birthday. But we'll be there. And we're going to play Team Trivia. So come on out and hang out with us. Why don't you go out any Tuesday night, though? Bring your friends. Enjoy great food. Great local and national craft beer selections at reasonable prices. Right now, you can get Lion Creek Brewing's First Crush IPA on tap and Three Taverns Rapturous Raspberry Sour Ale in cans. Also, my hometown, go Tucker. Tucker Brewing's Georgia Red Lager, also in cans. Those are the newest ones in the craft beer lineup. But that's not all they have, so you're going to have to go check it out. Uh, they love serving the local community of Conyers, Covington, and the East Atlanta 
or the East Metro Atlanta area. And of course, thank everybody out that way for their years of support. But listen, you can live in Cobb County. You can live in Lakeville. You can live anywhere in the state. If you're listening to this show, hell, even if you live in Pennsylvania, drive down. You're sick of pudgies. Drive down. Get yourself some Atlanta pizza in Euro. And if you're not into pizza, you'll get a Euro. I want Mike to make me a portobello mushroom Euro. Oh, yum, 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 yum. Yum, 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 yum. I feel like he could do it. Yeah, that can, I'm I sure want, that could be arranged. I want a Euro pizza again. Uh, I need the whole damn thing. Open for dining in and takeout hours Monday through Friday, 11 to 9 p.m. Saturday from 12 noon to 9 p.m. Closed on Sundays. Check them out. Oh, good. Hey, you want you some hot dog? We, we got plenty. Look at this. Solid meat. Hello, ladies. I'd like you to meet my little friend there, Goliath. We had to order special elastic pants for him on the internet. Where's Carl? Oh, yeah! Awesome! Here's our introduction for the man who needs no introduction. It is Adult Swim and Atlanta uh, film cartoon uh, art maker Dave Willis. What's happening? We're talking about culturally relevant things like Ahab the Arab by uh, Ray Stevens. <laughs> yes. Uh, that might not fly were it released today. Um, you know, I vaguely remember that. I just remember the streak. That was yes. the one. And I feel like we did a Ray Stevens knockoff, a knockoff of a knockoff on squids, but I'm blanking on it. <laughs> we tried to get Weird Al in it. Yeah. And then we couldn't. So then we created a Weird Al knockoff called Strange Hal Spankovic. <laughs> <laughs> and then the day after it aired, uh, Weird Al went to Twitter and was like, what is the deal with this? <laughs> so then I got I got a, a contact info for him and I said, yes, or your agent uh, uh, wouldn't let us uh shot us down so he got pissed and then he ended up doing the theme for us and now i still get a christmas card from him every year <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. pretty awesome getting a christmas card from weird al mm -hmm. i'll brag about it that's a that's that's, not, that's a brag brag <laughs> it's not even humble i mean that's pretty that's a not funny. humble at all oh. i came in here both guns blazing i get christmas cards every year from Weird Al Yankovic. <laughs> so, Dave, you're joining us tonight because there's lots of stuff going on right now. Currently, if you go to YouTube, you can find brand new uh, content featuring uh, everyone's favorite cartoon. We all love it, Aqua Teen Hunger Force. These are shorts that are on there now, not not full episodes, but uh, they're funny as hell. Thank you. Yeah, they're uh, three-minute shorts, just side stories of the villains. We're calling them aquadonk side pieces and uh yeah yeah they're uh we're real proud of them they're very uh i think they're I think they're funny the last one uh goes up tomorrow and then it'll be on youtube forever for uh no one to make any money off of it <laughs> it is our gift it is our gift to the world well thank you are, are they going to hbo max i don't know you know what? I don't know. I, I we just, I think it was always sold to us as internet shorts. Right. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, we're you know, or the the villain side stories, and uh, that seemed like a very funny premise. So sometimes you'll the Aqua Teens poke their head in. Actually, Carl seems to be in a lot of them. The brood weird rap. sort of way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's. Uh, Driving food uh, door to door, <laughs> ding dong doofus or ding dong dummy, <laughs> and Shake tries to tip him in change that he's been heating in a skillet. <laughs> Carl knows knows immediately. <laughs> it's only like forty because his plan doesn't work because it's only forty five cents. <laughs> <laughs> So, I think we talked about it before, but and I'm going to shut up after this because everybody's got questions. But what was the what was it that kept them from being full episodes uh, on Adult Swim to to doing what you've done? 
it was never pitched to us as bringing the show back. It was, would you be interested in um, doing these little shorts? They were just trying to build up this sort of the YouTube side of things. And um, cause they had been doing all these single, you know, shorts are these kind of art projects, these insane, you know, trippy things. There were a lot of them were, were cool, but I think they were like, well, maybe we could beef this up by uh, using some characters that are in our stable. And uh, Malero and I were both, both into it, you know, and the show has been off the air for years now. So I think we were kind of, I think we were kind of burned out when it, when it was done, you know, and, and the idea to bring this back was like, Oh, this, this could be a fun little way to just sort of dip our toe. And so it was always considered that, but we, we, we've had a blast making them and, um, you know, if they wanted to bring the show back, I think we'd both be into it. You know, did you find it easier doing the three minute as opposed to the 12 minute or was there, was it kind of hard to cram it in that time frame? No, the I it's always the idea. It's always like the main idea for the story and like things like the brood rap, like we could have come up with all sorts of dumb shit to kind of drag that out to 11 minutes, you know? So it really isn't it. And probably every episode of Aqua Teen, we could probably compress down to three minutes if we wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I've said this millions of times, I'd say it again, but you know, when the show started, it was like the shortest show on TV and, and by the time it ended, it was like the longest show on the internet. <laughs> um, so I, yeah, no, the, it was not, not hard at all to, to bring it down to three minutes. It was always sort of an arbitrary ending. And uh, people were like, you don't have to put credits on there. And like, we're not really, it's not really about putting our names on there. It's just about giving it a, giving it an end. <laughs> All right. You brought back some great guest voices like Henry Zabrowski and David Cross, Patton Oswald. Yeah, uh, I was, I was, was shocked. We could get them back. It was great. Cause they're bigger now than they ever were. And, uh, <laughs> it was really cool. I mean, I mean, it was in the teeth of COVID. So it was like, you know, some people have a home set up and like Dana, for example, like Disney, he's starring in this kid show, the uh, uh, ghost of Molly McGee. And so, you know, Disney came in and fumigated his house and then put up, a, <laughs> put up a whole studio. Um, but uh like david cross like he was i think he was renting a house somewhere because he was working on some project and uh we had this zoom call for him and he just holds up this amazon box and is like what is this for <laughs> like well that's your microphone did someone not explain <laughs> someone <laughs> not explain how that's supposed to be hooked up and he was like no <laughs> cool that's great <laughs> let me let me have a quick zoom with our pr production assistant <laughs> you know and so after you know he figured that out um it was great to be able to get those guys back and to have them remember it and you know to be a part of it when we first got pat and he had I just heard he was going to be in Ratatouille and I, I didn't know anything about it, but I was like, Oh, Pixar, and Brad Bird, this, this is going to be amazing. <laughs> and it was cool that he would still come back and do our two dumbass frat brothers from <laughs> outer space, you know, after that. And the, the cop in that one looked kind of like George Lowe. Was he going to come back and do a voice? We actually did, but, and, and George was funny, but we had to cut a bunch of stuff for time. And we just thought it was funnier that George just looked at him and they just beat the crap out of him. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, are his outtakes still super funny? Does he just get on and do stream of consciousness type stuff? Yeah. Yeah, he does. He'll, he'll go on. He'll go. He, he, Cause he knew, I think at a certain point and he, he makes fun of me for making fun of him for making fun of me, for making fun of him. Like we crawl, 
we've become to a point where we're a snake swallowing its own tail. We just <laughs> crawled up each other's ass. We started using takes in Space Ghost near the end of him making fun of me directing him. <laughs> I can pick him out, uh, but yeah, he he's definitely um, definitely. And I I sometimes get. I sometimes get texts from George from time to time, you know, mm -hmm. uh, living in, uh, living in Florida and, and, uh, doing his, doing his art thing. And, um, yeah, hopefully we'll get to work with him again. We try to put him in everything. So you go back 30 years with him, right? Or more, uh, close to close yeah. to 95. I remember when, uh, they first started showing, Space Ghost, coast to coast. You know, it was the you lived for it. It was the funniest thing in our in our little town. It's like, oh my god. Mm hmm. Yeah, we had a we we it'd be it'd be fun to bring that back too. You know, I mean, it'd be tough without Clay. You know, but uh, it is back. It's called Hanging with Doctor Z. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, I haven't seen I haven't seen that. Is that the Dana Gould thing? Yeah, yeah. It's funny. Because it's yeah. if you like Planet of the Apes and Dana Gould, you're gonna love it. But they have that little TV. It just reminds me so much of Space Coast Coast to Coast. Uh, to okay. All right, I have to check that out. Yeah, I see. I see him plug it on Twitter sometimes, but I haven't haven't checked it out yet. He has a big reverence for Planet of the Apes, um, <laughs> and he really does. He did a he did a comic book, or a, he took the Rod Sterling script, and he and another guy put together this uh, graphic novel. Wow. And when we all went to see him and, and Bobcat, I brought mine with me and had him sign it because I'm a nerd. <laughs> he's he's a good dude. He's a nice guy. I had a question for you, Dave. I was listening to um, the Audible version of Pet Cemetery today. And oh, wow. Dexter narrates it, Michael C. Hall, mm -hmm. and he, he crushes it. But when he's doing the monologue of Judd Crandall, when he's explaining to him about the whole Micmac burial ground and about how they brought the one kid back and he wasn't right and all this stuff i just kept thinking god i would love to hear carl do this whole model <laughs> <laughs> i only saw the movie and i always only remember the the ramon song which is just on the credits is like i don't want to be buried <laughs> in a pet cemetery <laughs> It's like, boy, they really cranked that out. <laughs> Give me some money. But my, my, my question was, there's a lot of movies that I would love to hear, like Carl and Meatwad and Master Shake, where you guys just read the lines, but in your voice and your affectations. <laughs> and I think they would be, I think it'd be super easy for you guys. I don't know about copyright, but. It was uh, the, the best of times. <laughs> it was the worst of times. <laughs> Uh, I think Carl should get a, a dramatic spinoff like you know sitcoms used to go away the long running sitcoms and then there'd be you know a dramatic show like Lou Grant or Trapper John MD and <laughs> yeah what would it what, could run a laundromat what could he possibly be <laughs> equipped to do <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, can you really can you really do an hour long procedural about a guy who scalps tickets behind a guard? <laughs> I can't. Yeah, straight up. No, Aerosmith is playing in there. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean it's misspelled? A R R O W. <laughs> nah, no, nah, those are legit tickets. In the red and crayon. That's right there on the floor, duh, dude. Steven Tyler, you got the, the things. You're an undercover cop, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a police procedural where he gets arrested every week. Oh yeah. <laughs> what is Carl? What crime is Carl doing today? I'd love to see him come back and do some more football talk. Yeah, we 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 sell Carl out pretty routinely for any sort of ad. We'll do we'll do triscuits, uh, goldfish. <laughs> uh, <laughs> High dollar uh, liquors. Uh, neither we don't just have to do the the, the cheap uh, AT and T long distance. <laughs> I'm available for any and all. It's kind of funny. I was reading this uh, 
uh, Chuck Klosterman book about the nineties and they were talking about how um, artists were just didn't want to sell out and uh, how that was just a big deal back in the nineties. And, and uh, it turned the corner <laughs> at some point because yeah. Matt and I don't think twice about it. If they're like, <laughs> Hey, would you, um, would you be into doing a Carl ad for asbestos? We're like, yes, absolutely. <laughs> what's, the, what's the quote? <laughs> it, it works in oven mitts and insulation. Just, you know, keep your distance. I'm not saying, I'm not saying breathe it in, but it's a high quality American made product. <laughs> It was really big back in the 90s, especially the early 90s, to be anti-anything corporate. Like Bill Hicks was uh, one of those comedians who made fun of other people for doing it. You know, like Jay Leno did Doritos and, and Willie. I think, though, in his stand-up bit, and I know this because I used to obsessively listen to his CDs. He says, well, the only person who's allowed to do it is Willie Nelson because he has tax issues and he should pay it back. Remember he did the Taco Bell, the Lady in the Rose tattoo commercial? Oh yeah, yeah. I I decided I always had a different tact about it because I always thought, you know, I remember Neil Young doing that this this uh, songs for you or whatever, yeah. where he's making fun of artists doing that, and I thought, you know, he should just he should just write a song. He should just solicit a company to like I'll do a song for you. And in fact, I'll even do it to the theme of the needle and the damage done, you know, uh, as long as we put all the, send all the money to a charity, you know, just mm -hmm. as a pure, it felt like he, that's a, that was a way he could just dynamite it, you know, at the, at, at the base. But, and that's what we did with Aqua team. We were like, let's, we met with our uh, department that does sales and we were like, can we do do an actual, like so many shows will do like, will show the character selling out and then losing their soul. But let's have, I mean, Shake is such a sellout to begin with. Let's have them sell out to a real company. And they were like, yeah, Boost Mobile, we could do that. And that's what that whole Boost Mobile thing was. We just had Shake all of a sudden he's real good friends with a larger than life cell phone that has uh, <laughs> unlimited texting and data and, uh, and um, but then at the end, at, at the end of the day, we were like, we have to get the money, not, not us, but the company, the company should get the money. And and uh, it did work out that way. But then at the end, we kind of got disgruntled when um, I think Boost Mobile sent us for Christmas. We we engineered this whole deal and we brought in all this money and then they sent us like this like lotion kit for Christmas. <laughs> and we were like, are you fucking kidding me? And I think Matt uh, FedExed it back to them. <laughs> Overnight FedExed it, them the lotion kit. Was it at least Bath and Body? Was it at least like a good? Oh, brand? no. It was like something you'd find in a Hampton Inn. <laughs> it was like hand lotion. <laughs> Great. Boost Mobile hand lotion. <laughs> I, that's such a funny episode too. Yeah, uh, it's and I never knew that it was actually that it was actually them who was involved <laughs> that was involved with it. I just thought you were making fun of Boost Mobile. Yeah, Shake was you know <laughs> it, it, it's very consistent with his character. He's just a complete whore. Mm -hmm. If he knew if he knew he had the power of, of being on TV, of course he was going to sell it to somebody yeah. immediately. <laughs> So the last time you were on the show, we were talking about the Aqua Teen Hunger Force movie and uh, also your pretty face um, animated stuff. What's going on with those shows or can you talk about it yet? Yeah, I can talk a little bit about it. Um, so the movie I'm going to, we're going to Skywalker Ranch next week to do sound design and mix on the movie and it'll be wow. done middle of May. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, um, and I'm really, uh, uh, yeah, I think Matt is too. I think we're both really proud of it. It's re really funny. I, I can't believe we did it in like a year span during COVID uh, via just innumerable Zooms. And um, it was it's like 75 minutes long, which usually when you hear a movie is 75 minutes long, you're like, uh-oh. 
<laughs> uh oh <laughs> but uh we were told to make a 70 minute movie uh contractually we were told to make a 70 minute movie and uh it's probably the right length of time it doesn't overstay its welcome it's really funny it's actually got us as opposed to the previous one it's actually got like kind of a story um and uh it's got uh an interactive element that i'm not allowed to talk about yet but that is very legitimately has never been done in a movie um, that I'm aware of. And it will, I think it will be kind of mind blowingly, hopefully mind blowingly funny when it comes out. Um, so we'll finish it middle of May and uh, it will come out, I think in November, video on demand and um, Blu-ray. And then eventually live on HBO Max months later. But um, yeah, I'm proud of it. I'm very proud of it. It's very funny. And um, the story uh, is, uh, it's a story that's worthy of a movie. And there's a lot of contemporary satire, which I don't think we did as much with the show um, when it was on the air that I think is very relatable to what's going on and in this day and age and could be uh could be great and we we got uh let's see uh peter serafinowitz is in it oh, cool yeah and uh paul walter hauser who um is just a revelation guy is so funny and we've got like people like uh you know it's just sort of comedy ringers just doing all sorts of crazy roles in it uh you know robert smigel's in it uh tim robinson's in it oh god you guys got tim robinson too yeah and um he was in ypf for, for yeah. us that's for right episode. that poker guy <laughs> yeah lip liquoroni the guy who <laughs> you could tell he had a good hand because he's always like <laughs> <laughs> um yeah you ever watch uh how to with john wilson yeah yeah we got him to do one line in the movie nice. <laughs> in his weird halting voice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of, lot of fun, fun, cool uh, uh, people in it. Tina Fey coming back? No, no, no. I don't know. Did I ever tell you that story with casting her in the, that movie? Like um, in the previous movie, I, a friend of mine got me into... Um, an after party at SNL got us into, got us into like the writer's room to watch the, the, and it was like an episode where Will Ferrell was hosting and, you know, and I didn't know anybody and I was drinking cause I was nervous, <laughs> you know, and I went to the after party and I'm drinking more and I'm sitting there going, God, it'd be so cool to get Will Ferrell in the Aqua Team movie. Like, I wonder if Will Ferrell knows what we do and, you know, more and more drinks. And then I see, uh, I'm introduced to Tina Fey and apparently her husband was a real big fan of Aqua Teen. So it was nice to talk to her. And, and you know, and of course I hold her in incredible high esteem. And, you know, I was thinking, oh, it'd be great to get her in the movie. But at the time too, I was thinking, how do I get to talk to Will Ferrell so that I can get him in this movie? So we're leaving the party and I'm, and I see her out there and I say, Hey, Tina, you know, at that point I'm kind of buzzed <laughs> and I, and I didn't know how to ask the question, you know? And meanwhile, like Will Ferrell's in some booth with Lauren Michaels sequestered in some private tiny behind a brick wall mm. uh, where you got to pull a bookcase to get to it. You, and you know, everybody is, um, you know, nobody wants to probably approach that booth. <laughs> Most especially a guy who's crashing the party and a drunk. You know? <laughs> but I, it was like, uh, hey, Tina, do you know anybody famous? <laughs> That's what I asked her. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, like, as I'm leaving, I just met her. And he's like, do you know anybody famous? <laughs> she goes... What do you mean, like uh, like Queen Latifah? 
<laughs> and then at that point, my wife had pulled pulled me away. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> well, at least you didn't go up to the booth and throw yourself at it and be like, "I want to be on you." <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've got plenty of those. These, I've got plenty of these drunken sort of stories. Yes, I don't, I don't drink anymore. The last time I got drunk was a year ago this week, and I kept prank calling Adam Carolla. <laughs> what did you say to Adam Carolla? I don't want to repeat it. <laughs> I think I said, "Hey, would you suck my dick?" or something like that, and he went, "Yeah, okay." So, <laughs> it wasn't like I used a spoof number either. I was so drunk I called him, and he, you know, I've talked to him before because he used to be on the old radio show all the time. And I just, I woke up the next morning because when you wake up, like. <gasps> hung over because i you know i don't drink a lot i was just with my old buddies up in you know new york state and we went to all these uh you know breweries and whatnot so i wake up in the morning and this first thing i do is where's my phone where's my phone where's my phone and you know thank god it was only that although i did try to call other people they didn't answer <laughs> so you got him you should have sick dr drew on you you know the worst was when i call i used to call uh every once in a while i'd call lewis black and ask him if the same question and the last time i did it he answered and he went sure i'll suck your dick <laughs> and he wanted me <laughs> that's a pretty good lewis black <laughs> you you even asked about the ypf shorts like we're making those too those are going to be fun they're they're uh they're animated they're they're really going to be they're really something else. They're going to be great. They're amazing. Um, but I don't know what I could tell you about them. <laughs> are, so you gonna short. Throw, are you going to throw those on YouTube also? Or are you going to? I think they're going the same place. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're sort of fully animated. Like there's one we were working on today where uh, it's um, Satan decides to pull all the guys into a human centipede and then he just decides to complete the circle. <laughs> so it's like a human circle centipede. <laughs> and then he just, then he sings that Elton John sort of circle of life uh, song, <laughs> Lion King, and then just chucks him off the mountain. <laughs> and it's just three minutes of them just rolling. Like you ever see that video of the, uh, <laughs> of the it's like in europe or something some tire comes off a truck and it just keeps rolling down the mountain for like minutes that's <laughs> that's basically it with with commentary right. are you gonna have some of the voice you gonna have pepitone like oh, oh yeah they're all in it that's everybody's awesome. in it you know uh dana's character troy is is shoved up gary's ass and he's like god you got a prostate like a grapefruit you really should get this looked at it's like i can tell you but i can't i had my i can't find my glasses and you know then dan trying to flu plays benji is like well uh there's some crushed glass down here but i'm a couple assholes down from you and <laughs> it's just basically that for three minutes he's such a straight arrow in real life when you when you meet him in person it's hard to believe that he's that guy on yf oh dan yeah <laughs> yeah he's not a really i mean he's he likes he'll, he'll cut loose but i think he was a little i think it was like oh god i hope i don't get typecast as a pedophilic <laughs> <laughs> cannibalistic weatherman from charlotte yeah <laughs> <laughs> who is he really into we did that one man play when we had him on the show and, and i'm just a minute at loss cassavetes yeah, yeah he did the he did the one man show as cassavetes he's oh right yeah 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 dan's amazing he's a great he's an amazing actor um really funny he's in it um craig rowan matt Servito, just everybody henry obviously henry zabrowski and dana and eddie and he's back uh, we did I worked on an episode where Eddie and uh, Troy, Dana's character, are both degenerate gamblers, and they both like come up to Satan's office to 
to basically lick his hooves and swallow his piss just so they can watch <laughs> football on the big screen TV. And, and, uh, awesome. but, uh, they, they have a bet with Satan about the jets and, um, Satan has already put Gary on the shoulder of the jets coach, um, to basically throw the game. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah. They're, they're really fun. There's a lot of story and a lot of jokes packed and, like three minutes so right yeah well anything you're working on before we let you go anything you're working on currently you can tell us about or any any projects that aren't uh, adult swim doing voice work acting no there's uh well casper kelly and i are doing a um we're doing a pilot for comedy central all i can say is it's a future western we're just in the early stages of it right now but we're really excited about it but it's animated and and uh should be fun and funny we just future western just, like kind of westworld type of situation future um sort of the premise is kind of like uh it's post-global warming and so half the country is a rice paddy so <laughs> texas took over the other half of the country by force <laughs> and just installed the codes of the old west oh, uh, okay. back so in new texas so it's uh we're still I shouldn't say too much about it, but, but it's animated and, uh, it's, yeah, it's super funny. We're actively making it now. So, but it'll be, a, it, it's going to take a minute. Yeah. You know, animation takes, right. it, takes, takes a second. So. Well, we know it'll be funny. Yeah. So, I hope so. We hope it'll, uh, we hope it'll get picked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Us too. Believe me. Good Lord, believe me. Are you gonna to like? <laughs> are you gonna to get to like hang out on the couch with George Lucas and have have a couple beers when you go to Skywalker Ranch? You know, it's very interesting. Um, it's it's pastoral, but yet they've got this movie theater set up where you go in and you mix it. There's no other place like it on on earth like it's unbelievable it's a valley he owns this valley and um we have sort of a joke referencing this but back when we were there i was like you know if i owned a valley if i was this rich i would just like i would erect what looks like a giant rocket ship and i would just have it steaming constantly <laughs> and like have people just go man do you, do you really think that thing takes off? Have you ever seen it take off? You know, people would talk about it constantly. And um, there's a mansion that's apparently, got, I never really went there, but it's apparently got all sorts of Star Wars memorabilia in the Valley. And um, it's called Lucas Valley, but it was Lucas Valley before he bought it. Oh. Um, maybe he bought it strictly for the name. I don't know, but he... Uh, I do remember driving up to the mansion one night and my lights just going across uh, a figure and I just caught the waddly neck of a figure. And I was like, with a Q-tip head. And I was like, that's George Lucas. <laughs> that was Lucas. Wandering, walking. I, I didn't stop. I didn't, I didn't dare stop. But, um, but it is, yeah. It, it really, it really is. It's, it's, it's a, it's a super neat place. And what's cool about it probably is some. They're going to be mixing some crazy Marvel movie there. You know they are, and it's just, it's just cool to know that. But you know nobody's going to let us in there. But it's, it's kind of cool to just come out at lunch and you see who's who else is doing their thing there. And it's, it's a special place. It's really neat. Oh, hi, Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> oh, just doing a little lady R <laughs> on Doctor Strange. Hey, I have a question to ask you guys. Did you guys go to the uh, Dead and Company show? We went to the the most recent one in Atlanta. Yeah. It's not a dead show, but it, that was my first of that ill. Yeah. At 51. Now I get it. I get it. I get it now. Yeah. I didn't even I didn't even know the dead until I went to college. And then I was just like, what are these old guys fucking prattling on about? And the older I get, the more I listen to it. And I'll go over to that dead channel on Sirius. And my wife's like, 
please don't, please don't listen to the dead. <laughs> and, and I'm like, but it's so rich in meaning. And the older I get, the more, the more I love it. It's and, what I listen to when I'm getting an MRI. Because <laughs> oh. by the end of one song, it's finished. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> I was saying, don't bring. Oh, you're not bringing your earbuds into that uh, donut, are you? <laughs> they, they give you headphones. So <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh, my God. is having some serious brain trauma. Uh, oh, no, we're creating it. Um, no, uh, but the other thing that, would, that blew my mind about it, like the drummers both look like they should just be in the villages, you know, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like Mickey Hart's just got that big tube set up and he's... <laughs> He's cranking on this pipe. Yep. And that sort of drums and space ending is really, really terrible. But uh, but but John Mayer is like, he's not, he could probably blow everybody off the stage like very quickly. And he's just he's doing all he can to just stay in the groove and stay with the ensemble. You got Bob Weir, who's not really like who's probably like just not a front man at all mm -hmm. you know the the dynamic is unbelievable yeah he, really what mayor did was brought brand new life to that band and the women stopped looking like they you know walked off of a hippie bus from 1978 and started looking <laughs> like you know girls that might like john mayer so that was nice I mean, not to be misogynistic, but I'm just saying it brought a younger crowd to the shows, which is why they do those great big full venues now. But also, Mayer really put the effort in to learn all the songs, and uh, he's just really good. He's just it. really good. and uh, But what's just so great is that he could just, you know he could just explode at any moment and oh, he, yeah. in, in just a fury of music and he's all he's just doing is just staying in the groove with them and taking a back seat is it's really admirable and then so i was talking to a buddy of mine who also makes guitar uh cartoons sorry uh, uh matt harrigan he we worked together on space ghost back in the day and uh I, and he's a big time deadhead and i was like we should like could we make like a dead cartoon? Like, but who would pay for that? You know, and I was <laughs> like, it would be great. But like, I've fallen in love with this guy on that dead channel, Big Steve, the Big Steve radio. Yeah. Hour. Do you, are you familiar with that? Yeah. His voice, I want to put him in a cartoon. His voice is great. And, um, and Bill Walton, who is, who who sometimes goes off on these terrible tangents i heard him on al franken's podcast and i was like oh he sounds like he's taken too many back pills before <laughs> this but the two of them i was like could i make could you make a cartoon with those two guys as the voices i was like i don't know who would watch it or pay for it but i would watch it i would watch it bill walton's hilarious just because of what you said and he's been he's been that way for decades yes showtime yeah. but he's got a very he's got a very unique voice both those guys have a super unique voice a big steve guy is just like you know and jerry i can't do i can't yeah. even, i can't even come close to doing his justice but it's like jerry liked motorcycles and we <laughs> told him you could get on a motorcycle and the <laughs> next thing we know jerry is riding down 20 on um but he, he just, I could listen to him for hours. He's like this radio pro that has this gift where he, you can just listen to him for hours and he could just read off a takeout menu and you'd wanna, <laughs> you want to hear it. Number five. <laughs> I can see it being on Showtime, like that Mike Judge animated thing about yeah. the rock and roll music and the, he did the... Oh, I love those. Yeah. The country music those, one was so good. Yeah, country music one. Those are great. Like uh, George Jones, who's like, he, he had those two characters, the duck and the old man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's told to, he was told to get rid of the duck because everybody was losing their mind. The duck was always like this really bad, like, uh, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I can't, like a, 
you tried my daddy, Joe. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and so he finally officially kicks the duck off the bus. And everyone's very happy. And then they get down the road about 10 miles. And then he tells the bus driver that he's got to turn around to go pick <laughs> the duck back up. <laughs> His mind just Swiss cheesed of just five chemicals. I was going to ask you, are there any other like uh, discernible voices that are popular now that you think about, oh, I wish I could get them? Yeah, you know, I make a list. I make a list of people that I think are sort of in, um, I won't give you all of them, <laughs> but, uh, but I do, I do, I make a list of people because I feel like so much voiceover is, um, just famous people that kind of suck, you know, yeah. and they don't really have a, you know, some of them are, are great, but some of them you're like, I know why you're famous because you're great on camera, <laughs> but the voiceover guy is just the guy that just, you know, just channels his whole persona through his voice into the microphone. But I'll tell you a couple. Have, have you guys ever seen Southside? Steve? Oh, yeah. I love Southside. I love Southside. Love, I, I interviewed Diallo Riddle last year. And, oh, wow. Because I love Southside and I love Sherman Showcase, both of those shows. Oh, I, you know, I don't know uh, Sherman Showcase. Oh, but, you know um, what? It's, it's like I, I'm a... familiar. I'm, I'm, I know the name, but I'm not, I haven't seen it. Um, yeah, it's like a parody of Soul Train, but it's the same, you know, him and Bashir Salahuddin or whatever. But I'm sorry, go ahead. I no, get no, so excited because nobody watches Southside and I freaking love that show. Oh, my God. It's so good. It's so <laughs> funny. Uh, I'll tell you someone that's interesting. You, you ever listen to Mike Campbell, who was Tom Petty's lead guitarist? No. Oh, hmm. He that? sounds like Tom Petty's kid brother. Okay. And Petty always had an interesting voice, but... Mike Campbell like does this thing on the Tom Petty channel and I was like holy shit it sounds like Tom Petty's like sort of came back to life and then uh and then gargled with the barbed wire <laughs> <laughs> but he's really got like a great um he's got it I'd love to use him in something He'd probably be a terrible actor but he's I mean, his voice is amazing um, and he was a good actor who was it from Southside, though? Uh, the guy who played Bluto. You ever see that episode where they all do that intervention about him losing his hair? Yeah, yeah. That's very <laughs> he is, funny. He is great. Oh, yeah, that, he is a great voice. His name is Ronald, Ronald L. Connor. Um, Antoine McKay, who's in... Um, you ever see Patriot and Amazon? Mm-mm. Have any of you guys seen that? Patriot? Patriot. No. I the spy God. show? Oh, my God. This is like, this has got to be top five TV shows for me of all time. Oh, wow. Of all time. I mean, I put this show with Breaking Bad. I put this show with The Sopranos. Really? This wow. is a top five show for me. It's so funny, but it's also like got... It's just an awesome, awesome mix. And it's a bummer that they only made two seasons of it. But my favorite, like, I put it in there with the wire. Yes, I put it on that Pantheon. I'll do it. <laughs> please, please. Now we got to check it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, I, I'm telling you, you will send me flowers. You will, <laughs> you will, you will send me flowers with a nice card it in a couple of days and a Christmas card, which won't be. You're as gonna go. What, why was I wasting? What have I been doing, wasting my time with all other TV shows that wasn't <laughs> named Patriot? Yes, it's just Patriot, not the Patriot. Yes, Patriot. Patriot. Yeah, it's a terrible name. Yeah. It's a terrible name. You see the you you'll see the picture and you'll be like, yeah, I know why I skipped this. It's kind okay. of just it looks like just another dumb. Um, but it's not. It's brilliant, 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 and funny too. So funny. It's great. So Terry O'Quinn, Michael Dorman, Kathleen Monroe. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Wow, it's been around for a while. Well, they only made two seasons. Okay. But you know, they don't throw that stuff away. No, <laughs> no, they, they don't just like they, this is your last chance to watch it before we completely delete it. <laughs> awesome. um, I'll, 
I'm going to tell you one other voiceover person that I, this guy, Sean Harris, who's in the Green Knight. Did you see that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That. that guy has a sinister voice. Yeah. And he has a know. good look, too. But I mean, he's definitely got that sinister voice to go with it. Mm hmm. Crazy, sinister, wormy, villainous yep. voice. You, you just can't fake it. There you go. If Thank any you. casting agents are listening to this, <laughs> Do not hire those people. <laughs> Before we let you go, where can Tim get a copy of Moon Master 9 so he can play it on his Twitch stream? <laughs> He's got the uh, he would it. have to go to the New Mexico uh, <laughs> desert and dig it up. It's under, uh, it's under three tons of concrete. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go check that out. Dave, thanks for coming on the show, man. Um, yeah. It's great to talk with you again, and you know we all love everything you guys do and that you do. So much success, and of course, when the movie comes out, we'll we'll tout it as much as possible. Yeah. And, oh, thanks very much, man. And we'll all talk right. To you. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Bye, Dave. Dave. Appreciate it. Hey, I want to thank Dave Willis for joining us. We'll be back next week with more uh, snooze or views or snooze. I mean, and and all sorts of stuff. Uh, if you're interested in becoming a Radio Lab or a Patreon, go to patreon.com forward slash Tim Andrews. And, uh, of course, follow us on all the social medias. And make sure, if you're watching the show on YouTube, to like and subscribe and share. Oh, and by the way, keep it canon. <laughs>